Hello everyone. Happy James Day. Well, sorry for the very botched setup. I am moving house at the moment, but I had to bring you all a video. You gotta feed the kids. This video is one that a lot of you have been asking for. You've been asking for it almost as much as I've been asking you all to subscribe recently, which if you haven't done yet, we're gonna have a problem, you and me. This is just a little intro as somewhat of a disclaimer. Whilst there's definitely been a positive reception to the idea of a quarantine collab between me and Nick Ocado, some people have definitely been raising their concerns and I just wanna quickly address those right now. This video is primarily for entertainment purposes. Nick Ocado and I have been in our fair share of drama recently and I thought it'd be quite funny to bring him onto the channel and discuss it with him. However, more serious topics such as mental health are discussed in this video. I think this quarantine collab was definitely a really funny one, but it's also very insightful. We discuss the stresses of being a YouTuber, therapy, and what in Nick Ocado's life is fact and what is fiction. Mental health awareness is something that matters a lot to me, and I'm very happy that there's a portion of this video which is dedicated to being honest about mental health. And for the record, if you at home are struggling during this quarantine period, which I know a lot of you are, please do not bottle it up and talk about your mental health. Nick Ocado admits in this interview that he receives therapy, and if he can do it after eating a 21 pound lobster, then so can you. And without further ado, please don't cancel me. Okay, so I am joined by the wonderful, the very special Nikocado Avocado. Hi, your online boyfriend. Yeah. Who's coming to get you, so. Why, why, we're not doing this. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got the e-boys and now I've got my e-boyfriend. I've got like the two. Perfect. All right, so I've got some questions lined up for you. They're a mix, kind of like talking about the videos we did, as well as a few questions that some of my subscribers have put forward. As you, you may have seen, I've been asking on social media for a few questions. Oh, so you're picking from there. Okay, by the way, anybody watching, I have no idea what he's about to ask me. We literally <laughs> talked for like 10 minutes, not even. I don't even know what he's about to say, so this is- I'm about to ruin his life. Oh God. <laughs> I don't need a help doing that, clearly. I can ruin my own life. Yeah. <laughs> so your one condition for coming to talk to me on my channel was that the first question oh. is something to do with your only fans. Yes, that is my new career. It's taken off. I just spent five hours responding to all of my DMs. Five okay. hours. It's like an office job, literally. I talk to everybody. Is it a good conversation that you have with them? Is it? Oh, oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, it is such an interesting thing. We don't need to go into the details just this early in the video. Okay, okay. Let's yeah. just, well, you can use your imagination, but people yeah. really enjoy what they see. <laughs> and people send me photos and videos and, you know, with their partner, they're both enjoying me to get, like, they'll be playing my mukbang in the background. It's really wild. It surprises me. As someone who's British, we, we British have a culture of being quite shy about talking about sexual topics. Uh-huh. Which was kind of like the purpose of the video that we did as the group of us is like, it's not as if to say, oh, that's gross it's just like oh oh my god you know what i it's mean it's shocking it, yeah shocking yeah i mean it's still shocking to me i never <laughs> thought that i'd be you know taking my clothes off in front of you know thousands of people but here i am <laughs> seeing yourself uh, scoffing kfc in the background of other people having sex is something that you weren't yes exactly <laughs> or them you know <laughs> oh, god, oh, god. but you know what it's the best self-esteem booster ever because you know oh, i've gained oh. i've gained over 150 pounds from doing these damn mukbugs and yeah. uh, i'm eating healthy today by the way <laughs> oh, you, say, you, you, you had to bring the avocado. You had to bring the avocado. Yeah, I gained all this weight. And I'm like, you know, I don't really feel good about myself. But then knowing that other people love what they see or they like it, it makes me feel better. So I'm a bit of a thick boy myself. I keep the camera very high angle, you know, just the, that part of my body. But regardless. Right. Remember, I couldn't tell. I'm like, is he my size? I couldn't even tell. I wouldn't say that. I, well, I'm you're very not my tall. Size. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very tall. So I kind of, the, the weight filters out. But I would classify myself as thick, you know. How tall, how tall are you? I'm six foot four. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, you're tall. You're tall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm quite, quite tall. I'm six foot. Oh, you're six foot? You're yeah. taller than I thought you'd be as well, though. I yeah, you'd be sure I get that. that all the time. Yeah. Um, you mentioned about self-confidence and doing stuff on OnlyFans, boosting your self-confidence. I wanted to know, honestly, how you felt when you saw that four random dudes had made a video on your OnlyFans. Oh, I loved it. So did you go into it thinking, oh, this is going to be great no matter what? Or was it after the fact that you were like, oh, that was funny? You know, that's okay. It was after the fact. I went yeah. into it thinking they were going to really make fun of me or really like go in on going because yeah. you know like most videos about me on the internet are in that way they're like this guy's yeah. disgusting or this guy's atrocious you know so i figured it was mm. just another type of hating video but i actually loved it you know i thought it was really, yeah. really funny so is that, does that explain why you kind of you responded to that video but perhaps not to others was it just kind of like oh you thought you could have some fun with it more than anything well honestly it comes down to who made the video you know if i type my name into the search bar there's probably 20 videos made about me a day which yeah, is crazy probably. if you think about it, that's like 600 videos a month where people are reacting to my eating or my crying or my breakdowns or whatever you know i give 
people the content, so you're welcome yeah. making money off of me. There you go. I ate very well that month, I'll be real. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, sure you did. <laughs> but anyways, I decided to react to yours just because, A, you had subscribers. You, you know, you're a YouTuber. You know, when PewDiePie reacted to me, I was like... Oh, yeah. PewDiePie, <laughs> yes, roast Here me comes again. the cheddar. <laughs> yes, you know, and like, whatever, call me shameless, whatever, greedy, but every YouTuber low-key kind of thinks that, you know what I mean? Like, it's a business, too. I mean, I have to be selective in what I waste my time or spend my time doing or who I'm responding to. So, yeah, that's why I reacted to yours, because you're a YouTuber, but also it got a lot of views. But it was really funny. Like, I yeah. felt like if I played it, people would laugh at the actual video, too. Because a lot of the videos about me are boring. They're boring or they're just repetitive and dumb, so. Yeah, it was definitely an interesting angle because we didn't go into that video going, oh, we're going to look at his OnlyFans. It was like, I just saw your Twitter and I thought, oh, this, this is hilarious. I can't not talk about this. Really? And oh, wow. In the video, it's, I think Will is the one egging me on and going, OnlyFans, 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 you know. It created some great content, though. That video is, I'm so happy with that video. I find it hilarious every time I watch it. You did a good job. You did a really good job. That. It was funny. Let's talk a bit about Spill. Because oh, I wanted to mention yeah. that. Because I, I, for people who don't know, right, I addressed this on my story, but I haven't addressed it on my channel. Because it didn't seem appropriate to make this whole 10 minute video going like, no, I'm absolutely fine. Don't worry about me. I don't want to yeah. be making that kind of content. But basically, a, a, lot of t a lot of Spill channels, actually, they kind of took what happened between me and Nick. Can I call you Nick? Nick, yeah, that's my name. Yeah, we're, yeah. We're, on, we're on a first name basis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they took my response, which was intended as as to be humorous, to, intended to be satire, that kind of like, oh, oh no, you know, repeating that awkwardness of the original video of me being British and a bit, let's say, a bit frigid almost, mm -hmm. as a joke. And some people took that as me being harassed. And whilst I'm very much grateful for people sticking their neck out for me and trying to support me, I'd want to address it here. We're in a call together. This is very much consensual to this point. To this point. Well, you know what the thing is too? On YouTube, if someone gets the ball ro rolling, it's too late. So all it takes yeah. is like, 10 or 20 comments that have a lot of thumbs up to yeah. have that type of perception like oh he was harassed oh nick is preying on him or whatever where people see it and they just repeat it and they see oh this is what other people think well i guess that's what i think too mm. i mean it amazes me when i watch youtube videos i'll watch a youtube video i'll get an opinion and then i'll look at the comments it'll be polar opposite of what i gathered from watching it and then i read the comments and i scroll through and then by the end of that i'm like oh i'm starting to have an opinion about something that was way different than what I had. And I'm mm. very much influenced by everyone else's opinions. So I think yeah. that's also what happened. I mean, there was a lot of comments about it and then everyone just kind of took off and just snowballed down, so. Spill did apologize though. I'm not sure if you saw that, but Spill did apologize. I did like four days later and yeah. uh, I didn't think it was good. Ooh, are we, are we spilling some tea? Are we what? <laughs> That was not an apology. That was a PR statement. Okay, first of all, I got I got no email. I tried reaching out to them, got no email. Wow. And the worst part of what they did, they didn't even address. That was taking your jokes, taking out the punchline, yeah. and deliberately editing it to make yeah. it look worse. They didn't even bring that up. They didn't apologize for that. They just said, oh, if we hurt you, we're sorry. This is the bit that Spill uh, kept in of my video saying that I felt harassed. Just because my last name is a hotel, that does not mean that you can pay to sleep with me. Uh, this is actually the punchline of the joke. So I finished off the joke by saying this just because my last name is a hotel that does not mean that you can pay to sleep with me unless the price is right that's me joking about the fact you can sleep with me if yeah. i was if i was uncomfortable with the situation i would go that's fucked up you can't say that to me stop replying to me in this way and stop speaking to me in this tone you know and yeah. that was never going to be the case he or she whoever does that account changed the perception by taking yeah. that out and like i've seen some people trying to stand up for them like oh well they didn't have enough time or it was like it was the next three words <laughs> like literally yeah. it was, it was, a second. A second. And you could see my mouth moving to say the next part of the sentence. It literally cuts off at me going... They totally did that on purpose. So, you're eating avocado today. Oh, yes. Would you like to show, show the camera your avocado? It's over here rotting because I'm ignoring it. <laughs> yes, here it is. <laughs> I do eat healthy sometimes. Yeah. I have avocado sandwiches over here. Ooh. <laughs> so, you still got some carbs there at least. Okay, here's the thing. I'm so fat that like just to maintain my body weight, I need like 3,800 calories or something. It's like a lot of calories. Because you're making a big thing about being 300 pounds at the moment, aren't you? Are you trying to maintain that? Well, I can't really hit it. I can't maintain it. Like I, yeah. I weigh myself after a meal. It'd be like 299.9. I'm like, ah! Yeah, I saw that in a title of your video. Yeah. I just want to hit 300 pounds just to be 300 pounds just to say I am. If I'm this close, might as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> might as well run the full mile, you know? Yeah. It's so kind of the kind of the opposite of running the full <laughs> yeah well running yourself further to the grave literally yeah. but <laughs> 20 years ago a vegan lifestyle would have been seen as very extreme yeah um, now i'd say your lifestyle and what you eat is very extreme what has it been like for you going from one very extreme lifestyle to another extreme <laughs> yeah, yeah. <It's> been <laughs> extreme. <laughs> 
<laughs> Great response. <laughs> Literally, um, I know. It, when you put it that way, it really is going from an extreme to extreme. Mm. I was vegan for five years, so the first three years, I was an extreme version of veganism, so I didn't cook my food. Oh, you were a raw vegan? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Tons and tons and tons of fruit. And uh, like at first, I actually really enjoyed it. But then it got to the point where it was like really bad. I was really, really skinny. And so then I started eating like beans and everything else. But get them beans. Yeah. So I really have gone from an extreme to an extreme. Yeah. And it's been extreme. I don't, don't even know what to say. It's, <laughs> the, the, the story about you, I know a lot of your content can be falsified. It can be real. You know, you, it's kind of like a mix. You never really know what you're going to get. The video where you spoke about a heart attack. Uh huh. Yes. Did that actually happen to you? It happened. Yeah. Yes, it oh happened. Oh my gosh. So, yeah. so talk me through that. How was that? I mean, it, how was your heart attack? It's like, <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty good. Uh, it was scary. I actually couldn't believe it was happening. And then now that I look back, it's, well, you know, look at what I'm doing, of course. So now I'm doing a lot of plant-based stuff off camera. Like this is what yeah. I'll eat in a normal day anyway. So I'm doing my mukbangs. I'm actually trying to eat less in the actual videos. And then off camera, I'm having lots of green juices. I just bought a super good green juicer. Yeah. I'm doing lots of ginger juice. Have you heard of ginger shots? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard of ginger shots. Yeah, I've heard well, they're awful. <laughs> <laughs> they taste horrible, but they're very good for you. And they actually thin your blood naturally. If I'm going on the treadmill, I'm pumping all this blood around. Who knows what yeah. else is clogged in here? So it's like, might as well thin my blood a little bit. No, discretion. Don't do this just because I'm saying it. I'm not a doctor, yeah. but the, you know, I just... Don't worry. I don't think people are going to take your health advice. I, I don't think that's something that people are going to take away from this video, man. <laughs> no, no, it's crazy. People do, people do say like, I actually just got a cameo the other day. Like, can you tell me how to eat well for what? I'm like, you're asking the wrong person. <laughs> you see what I do? Opposite of that. And you're good. Well, you know... <laughs> My goal, actually, people laugh about it, but it is my goal. Watch, it's gonna happen. I'm gonna do these mukbangs for another year or two and then see where yeah. I'm at. And then I'm gonna lose weight and then show everyone how to lose weight doing my thing. And I don't even know what I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna do something with weight loss. Can you see yourself doing like lifestyle content? That would be the most ridiculous shift in YouTube history to watch, you know, $100 worth of KFC to how to lose weight safely. <laughs> how to have a flat stomach, how to oh have a flat God. tummy, how to count your carbs. Yeah, um, well, I kind of did it already. If you think about it. like before yeah. the mukbang stuff, I was already into like the lifestyle and I was like into the life like a, a certain type of life story where it was like not using too many chemicals it was very like natural kind of hippie-ish type of stuff so I am kind of wired that way anyway so I I definitely feel like I'm gonna come up with something good I can't wait and yeah I say 30 just because um even though besides the heart attack uh, <laughs> I, I don't have diabetes <laughs> oh, that little old chestnut. <laughs> Be besides that you know we don't, we don't really talk about that but besides that I don't have diabetes my cholesterol is on the higher end but not like crazy high and I feel like I can keep doing this till I'm 30 because I believe once you're 30 that's when shit hits the, hits the fan like that's when it's like you can't get away with so much I am younger I started this when I was 23 and you know mm. there's people who eat chips and Cheetos and McDonald's every day anyway so it's like when you're younger you can get away with it more but once you get older your body can't take can't handle it yeah, no, I no it's, ab it's sure. abuse. Literally, it's abuse to eat all this shit. And neither so. can my wallet. I eat way too many takeaways, and I've recently been looking at the amount I've spent on, you know, Uber Eats Deliveroo, and I've, <laughs> I've wanted to die. It's been awful. So I'm trying to move away from that anyway, but yeah, no, I totally get it. I wanted to know, what is the reasoning behind 300 pounds? Why is it 300 pounds the benchmark? Well, 300, because that's the closest thing I'm to. Like, I'm not going to do 400. That's too far. And here's the thing, too. It's, oh, okay. Because I'm like five pounds away, you know? And I keep trying. I keep trying so hard. I'll eat all this food and jump on the scale and I have a talking scale I don't know if you saw she has a British accent she's a bitch and she's like you are 295 <sighs> and then she'll go ready for operation wait so the, is she kind of hinting that you should get an operation yeah <laughs> you mentioned before we started recording this about multiple channels uh huh you have how many do you have eight uh no I have my main channel my second, my third, my fourth. I have four. Four. Well, five. Oh, wait, no, five. Yeah. I have five. <laughs> well, six if you count Orland. Sometimes I help him with his, so six. But And then seven if you count OnlyFans. Oh, yeah. I'm going to make a vlog <laughs> channel soon, and then a weight loss channel, and then a, a travel channel. Oh, and a fashion channel. Yeah, there's more oh on the way. <laughs> no, but in all seriousness- What is your reasoning behind so many channels? Do you find that it maximizes monetization for you? No, or? no, I wish I didn't have to do this. So my main channel, ever since Adpocalypse happened, there's a big shift on my channel and my CPM dropped like crazy. And then I was like, F this channel, why am I gonna spend all this money and get fat if I'm gonna make, barely make the money back that I spend making the video? So then I took over Orlin's old channel, which was Nick Okado 2, and then that yeah. CPM dropped. So I don't know why it keeps Right. Sorry, so I kept making more channels. My newest channel pays well, and I'm really blessed to have. Well, knock on wood. Well, I've heard that people outside of America they have 
not as good CPMs. No, we don't. I started my uh, main channel in Colombia, South America. So the 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 CPM was already really really low. Are you from Colombia? No, though? no. My husband's Colombian. He was born and raised your there. Your husband's Colombian. Yeah, and s are you? So what's your background then? So I'm. I was born in Ukraine. And I was adopted when I was a kid. And I was adopted when I was a kid. Ah, uh, see, I thought that maybe because avocado, I thought you were going to be a Spanish speaker. No, oh, I can't speak a lick, speak, speak a lick oh, of God it. Damn it! No, I, wanted to, uh, I had every opportunity to flex my trilingual muscles and, <laughs> and start speaking in Spanish with you. I can but bring no, I Orlin can't. in. He's he's in the other room. He can. No, don't. That's too much pressure. Don't oh, worry about okay. that. Don't, <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> so earlier, I mentioned that your lifestyle and your content could be quite extreme. Yes. I was wondering, have you heard of a, a YouTuber called Filthy? Frank? Frank from quite a while ago. No. No, okay. So he was one of the first people to kind of make commentary videos in the vein that people like I do now. Oh. He was a lot more extreme, but he if you look at one of his videos, he did all kinds of crazy shit. Like he did loads of crazy shit in public. He made cakes out of vomit and he'd eat them. Uh, very extreme. I'd say more extreme than yours, but he always portrayed this character of being at the end of his tether and, and quite, you know, out there. Wow. And he ended up struggling a lot mentally. He used to suffer from seizures and now he's, I'm not sure if you heard of the artist Joji, maybe? Mm -mm. And now he's a famous musician. Like he's oh. a huge musician. Yeah, oh. he's called Joji. He makes really good music. Definitely check him out. But he suffered a lot because of the extreme nature of his content. I was wondering, how do you cope mentally? Because obviously we see a lot of the breakdowns and we see a lot of the anger that you keep talking about. But on a real level, how do you cope with making content that out there and that emotive? I don't. <laughs> you I, don't. I don't. It's taken, a t it's taken a toll on my mental health. It's taken a toll on my relationship. In all seriousness, people think it's staged. People think that, well, actually a lot of people don't think it's staged. People think I'm a freaking nutcase and I belong in a, you know, an asylum or something. But mm. <laughs> no, it really, it really, really is. So funny you bring this up because I've talked to other YouTubers about the stress behind YouTube, yeah. creating content or having all your problems out there or, you know, whether yeah. it's a mistake, whether you're trolling, whether you're gaining weight even, which, you know, most people in life gain weight at one point or another, yeah. you just have so so many opinions, so much judgment, so much criticism, um, and hatred that it's really difficult. I was just talking to another YouTuber about this, and we're like, they could make a documentary about what it's like to be a YouTuber with the algorithm, CPMs dropping like in coronavirus, we're making yeah. barely anything, no money. So, taking off more clothes tonight, you know, <laughs> you yeah. know, pay the bills. <laughs> but seriously, it's just... Being a YouTuber is, people think it's a walk in the park. Like you make a video and you're done. They don't see the edits. They don't see, you know, what you put your heart and soul into something and then everyone hates it. It's just the worst. And you have to do it again and again and again. And then. What about that stress then? What makes you go that extra mile in being more out there, more extreme? Is it kind of just like you hit fuck it and you're like, boom, just going to do it? It's fuck it. It's fuck it. Fuck it. Why do I, I mean, it's too late to try to be squeaky clean. People have yeah. seen too many sides of me and I just, I don't know. I'm also a daily post. Or actually post sometimes twice a day depending on which channel yeah. you know so it's like I can't I just have to be myself and some days I'm in a bitch ass mood I'm just pissy and if I'm just pissy <laughs> that's what you're gonna get today you know what I mean like I, there's no fucking way I'm gonna sit here and act for uh, an hour my videos are long they're like an hour long yeah. so yeah it's definitely taking a toll on me because I am so out there and it's uh again my family has to see it I get phone calls from my cousins like uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get I get stuff from my family. So let, let imagine yours. my family. Yeah, yeah. just imagine my Go family on. and my husband's family. It's it's rough, and um, you know I got a therapist, and um, I've been on and off of medication, and it still is. It's like just so weird. It's just weird what I'm doing for my life, and it it does take a toll on me mentally. And to get back to your question, how I deal with it, I just don't. I mean, I just I don't know. Well, therapy is a way of dealing with it, and medication. I mean, that's that's a big part of it. And you know, what my therapist said she says you need to stop YouTube, and I'm like, uh, no, unless you're gonna hand me that hand me that coin too. Uh, this is yeah. my job, and I feel like this, this is a big thing that always comes up with YouTube is that y you can go to people and, and complain about and go like, this can be really difficult. The mental strain of being a YouTuber can be really can be really difficult. And some people can't handle it straight up. Yeah. But when someone goes, yeah, you should quit. It's like, no, nah, I can't quit. You can't. <laughs> so no, it's like, no, well, no. You know, I, it's dream really, of it. it's... I dream of quitting and it, sound, it really? feels so nice. Like, honestly, it's just like, I wish I could wow. just delete everything. All my channels, all my social media, just disappear. See, for me, it's all about music. When I, when I do music on the side, it's like I can actually put my soul into something and it feels... It feels like kind of contained and I will never make a video which is like sad. Like in a, in a way that you make videos where you're having these moments, I will never be able to do that. I don't know why my brain just stops me from doing it. Mm. I like talking about things that are kind of away from me. I, I, one of the exceptions is like our, our drama. You know, I liked that. 
I could talk about that again, but I like talking about things that are, you know, I can distance myself, right? And then my private life can be separate. But with music, it's very much a way for me to to give a platform to my, my thoughts, my beliefs, and the way that all of this affects me. So I, I, I use that as my out. Yeah. Do you know I'm a musician? I majored in music and I play violin. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've seen you I've seen you play violin. I've also seen you play violin with, with Trishy Land. Oh, no. Drawn out of your stomach. <laughs> No. My musician. Okay. My- <laughs> I, I, okay, wait a minute. Okay, let's talk about that. I was <laughs> intoxicated. So I was professional. I was working in New York City. Da, da, da. I was going on tour. I did lots of different stuff. And when I did that thing with Trisha, she's like, oh, I got a violin. You should play it for my OnlyFans. I'm like, Trisha, I haven't picked up my violin for like four years. Like legit four years. My violin's here. I mean, it's out of tune. I probably have to change the strings. It's bad. And anyways, so we were also drinking. So I sound like crap. That's a really bad first impression. Yeah. <laughs> that was parts of the Caribbean as well. Yeah. And I was naked, so there's that on top of it. So <laughs> You can't play instruments with clothes on. You've got to be naked. Yeah. To play your <laughs> yeah, as I said, I've been asking my viewers questions. Uh, a lot of them, in fact, I'd say around 85% of the questions have been about one thing. Uh-oh. What? My weight? No, no. Actually, no, no, no. Oh. It's, uh, it's your, your bussy. Oh! One of them was, uh, and I quote, why do you have the fattest extra mega juicy gorilla grip bussy? <laughs> because, um... I love my viewers. My viewers have the best questions. We've had some really insightful conversation here and, and my viewers are going, bussy, bussy, bussy. <laughs> That's like saying, why is your hair black or brown? Like, that's how God made me. God gave me yeah. with a big, fat, juicy bussy. Is it something you're very proud of, then, the bussy? Well, it looks good. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's so funny. I've seen people hating on it, but my bussy, on my only nick, uh, I get a lot of, you know, I, I post a lot of different stuff. Front, back, all around, up and down. And uh, people complain. All over the place. <laughs> they complain about the bussy, or like on Twitter, or... <laughs> On YouTube, they're, they're always attacking the bussy, like the bussy, the bussy. The bussy so hate, not the bussy hate. I literally am coming out with merch that says bussy. Oh my God. <laughs> we get statistics that show what people are watching the longest or what they're coming back to. <laughs> my bussy, it'll say like, like three years of watch. Like people put it on for a half hour, go once, go again, go twice, go again. I just have it on constant flow in every screen in my house. 24 <laughs> hour bussy. So my analytics suggest otherwise. So yeah. yeah, people lack the bussy, I don't know. Someone wanted you to rate their dog. So I figured, okay. why not? Sure. Why not rate a dog? I'm not sure if my camera can see it. I hope they, I hope it can. Can you see that? Aww. It's called Rolo. Do you know what a Rolo is? The reason I included it is because it's, its name is a food. So I thought maybe we could, you know, <laughs> that's a reason for us to like it. <laughs> his name is food? Well, it's no, his name that's... isn't food. A Rolo doesn't mean food. Oh. It's a, Rolo oh. is a type of food. Yes. <laughs> calling, calling a dog food would probably... Be... Come here, food. Yeah, I've got, I've got my chair and I've got my food here. <laughs> <laughs> I literally would name all my dogs food. Oh my God. Do you have any pets? Uh, Not at the moment. I really want a Bengal, like a, a silver Bengal. Cat. Oh, I thought you said bagel. I keep doing food. Let me eat another avocado. Wait a, what a bagel. Wait a minute. Okay, here we go. Avocado. It's all this healthy food messing up my brain. I really want a bagel. Mm. Yeah, some of the things that people ask me, well, they weren't even questioning some of them. One of them was, you don't fancy James. You were just high. I don't smoke. No, you don't. I'm not saying that as if I'm surprised that you you don't. Can but, you smoke in the UK? Uh, we it's not legal here. Oh, but everyone does it. Not and well, not everyone. I'd say it's like at university people Do smoke you? a lot. I used to. <laughs> I have in my in my life. Sorry, Dad, if you're watching this. But yeah, I, I obviously I have in my life at university. Mm. Not that that's an endorsement for doing it. All right, careful. Uh-huh. Uh, not anymore. I think. I mean, funnily enough, from, from I, I can say this on a video. Why not? Whenever I smoke weed what happens what happens right this is this is so embarrassing oh i gotta hear i get the urge not the urge i get the feeling that i'm pissing myself oh so i genuinely feel as if i'm wetting myself oh so i can't have it so whenever i have it i'm like if i'm at someone someone else's house i'm like oh my god i'm i'm pissing on their sofa right now and i'll, I'll like i'll like go to the loo and i'll be like no i wasn't pissing and i'll be like okay i'm fine i'm fine and then i'll go back down i'll sit down and go no, I actually am this time. I don't, oh I don't, my it, god! It has ruined it for me, which is probably which is a very good thing. But it's uh, yeah, no, I can't, I can't go near it. Like I can't have it at all anymore. Oh my god! Have you actually, you know, pissed yourself? No, thinking you- no. Oh, oh good. Oh. I, for clarification, never. <laughs> Not since I was oh, like three. <laughs> I used to wet myself. Here's a fun fact. I used to wet myself <laughs> till I was the age of ten or eleven. I was actually a really late. Uh, I used to wet the bed when I was a kid, and that it took me a long time to get out. 
about that. I was like 11 years old. It was crazy. I was like fifth grade. Yeah, I couldn't go to sleepovers. Sixth grade. This is why we're we embarrassing ourselves this much. I do that for <laughs> a living, so. This is just normal conversation yeah. for me. <laughs> <laughs> about the question that, about, that you don't fancy me. Um, oh. I wanted to end this by saying there is a high chance that without the video that we did on my channel, the e-boys would not exist. The channel that e-boys would not exist. Aww. And, no, genuinely, because it was a video that I brought everyone in and we all really yeah. loved making the video. The content was so funny, we thought, at least, you may not have thought that. It got like a million views. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's gonna it have like it, two yeah, million it's, views. So I wanted to kind of bring this almost to a close, almost, oh. by asking you who is your... Who do you think is the most attractive e-boy? There's not a right answer. There is a right answer. There's not a right answer for this. Wait, let me look at their faces again. <laughs> Here, let's pull them up. Um, well... Oh my god, I'll put all this stuff. Oh my god! Um, the most attractive... Okay, people... Oh no, this is not gonna look good. But, okay, wait a minute. If you, if you pick the one of us that puts a mask over our face, I'm gonna be very angry with you. Honestly, I hate to say... Say it, oh. but oh man, oh. I just, this is not gonna be good. This is not gonna be good. It's not me. It is you. Yes, I'm it's happy with you. that. <laughs> okay, as long as you're happy and not creeped out. I was gonna say is I hate admitting this because everyone thinks I was like being all creepy to you, and now look, Nick's being all creepy again to your face. Oh my god. But honestly, um, yeah, probably I'd say yeah, definitely yeah. <laughs> Well, in that case, then, will you be my boyfriend? I'll be your online boyfriend. Your online boyfriend. <laughs> I like that. Yes. I wanted to bring. I wanted to bring this to a close by um. You you mentioned right in your response that you thought me having a girlfriend was fake. I didn't know anything about you other than your Gabby Hanna roast. I didn't. Oh yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know your personal life. I didn't know what you do. I I didn't even know anything. I want to introduce you to my girlfriend though. Oh, she here? Yeah, she's. Oh well, she lives with me, so I, I thought I'd bring her in and let her say hi. <gasps> oh, it's a so, real girlfriend. Yeah, it's, no, it is real. <laughs> It's real. <laughs> Are you gonna pull out a cardboard box like Chavez? Like, here's my boyfriend. It's just a, it's an girlfriend. anime body pillow. <laughs> yeah. Kind of oh my gosh, hi. Hi, nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you too. Oh my God, you're so pretty. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> what, me? Me or her? Both of you. <laughs> uh, Nick said that he might be coming to London at some point. Yes. I was thinking maybe you could fight for my love. Listen, man, you can have it. <laughs> We both hope you and all in are doing well during quarantine. We're not, but thanks. We should really consider making a James Marriott code on your OnlyFans, by the way. I, I, I know I've raised it as a joke, but if you could do codes. I don't think we can do codes, but I- Your viewers are too young, James. Oh yeah, my viewers are too young. That's probably true. Okay, well, if you're 18 years or older, <laughs> I'm gonna post another oh, photo God. for you. No, for both for of both you. For both of us. For both of you. Oh, thank you. That way it's less creepy. <laughs> a, a, a joint tribute. Oh. Yes. I, oh, I already know I'm going to do it. It's going to be, really oh, it's gonna God, be a okay. video. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming. Well, thanks for having me. And you, Aria. Thank you for coming to say hi as well. And yeah. It was fun. Yeah, it's been, it's been great. I'll catch you all next time.